In our last video, sadly, we got cut out to some technical difficulties, but we're gonna continue the problem and I'm gonna restate what I was saying in the last video. And I believe I started to say that it was starting to look up for me in the, inside this problem. And the reason I said that is because I've eliminated every other variable except the variable that I want. And if I look here, I have a T2 here, I have a T2 here, I have a T2 squared here, I have a T2, and I have another T2 squared. Now this equation is explicitly in terms of T2. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get all the like variables on the same side. And you're probably asking yourself right now, if you've spotted it, I have a T2 here, and I have a T2 here. And from algebra we know we can add variables with the same I'm sorry. We can add similar variables. So why am I adding this negative 5.49 T2 plus 36 T2? Why am I putting those, those together? And usually inside this part of the problem, I leave things exactly as it is because when you make a mistake, it's really, really easy to spot your mistake when you leave things explicitly written out like this. I usually well, I always, I never simplify until I get to the last step, except, and this is the only exception, except if something cancels out. So first, I'm going to distribute this negative, okay? And actually, when I was doing this problem prior, I made the mistake of not accounting for this negative here. So I actually had positive 988.89, but this is supposed to be negative 988.89. Eight, nine plus 5.49 T2 minus 36 T2 plus 0 0.2 T2 squared is equal to 5.49 T2 plus 0 0.1 T2 squared. Now, as I bring all the like variables to one side, and I'm going to work this out, so that's 1100 minus 988.89. This gives us 111.11. And again, I'm not going to simplify this. I'm going to leave that exactly as it is, and you'll see why in a short moment. So 5.49 T2 minus 36 T2. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to subtract 5.49 T2 from both sides of this equation. So over here I have 5.49 T2 minus 5.49 T2, which is zero. And similarly, I have 0 0.1 T2 squared. And I'm going to subtract the same thing from both sides of the equation. And this is going to be zero. So these are going to be, this is going to be zero plus zero. And over here I have 5.49 T2, because I subtracted this from both sides plus 0 0.2 T2 squared minus 0 0.1 T2 squared. And you'll see why it's useful that I didn't combine those terms because I have 5.49 T2 here and I also have negative 5.49 T2. So what happens is these terms cancel out. And if I really simplify this, I have 100 and 11 minus 36 T2 plus 0 0.1 T2 squared, which is all equal to zero. And from pre-calculus algebra, or even basic college math, or even high school math, this resembles a quadratic equation because a quadratic equation is an equation of the form AX squared plus BX plus C where A, B, and C are real numbers. And bear in mind, X is just a variable. X is our independent variable in this case, okay? And similarly here, T2 is just our independent variable. It's only a placeholder for a value that we don't know or an unknown. So if I were to write this in this form, if that helped, I have 0 0.1 T2 squared minus 36 T2 plus 
0.11 is equal to zero. However, you should get used to being able to recognize this right from this equation because even though it isn't arranged the same, we know from properties of real numbers, it doesn't matter the order in which they are. And that's a beautiful thing about properties of real numbers. So I could have written it like this, I could have written it like this, this could have been here. However, these two are equivalent. And also, since, like, since it's structured like that, I know the solution to this. And I can use the quadratic formula. So I can solve for T2. Now I have an explicit equation giving me what T2 is. So T2 is equal to negative B. B in this case is the term on our linear term because here x is to the power of 1, that's a linear term, and b is attached to it. So our linear term here is just t2. So b is actually negative 36. So negative b would be positive 36 plus or minus negative 36 all squared, brackets are very important, minus 4 times 0 0.1. times 111.11, closing my brackets, divided by 2 times 0 0.1. Now, I always work out what's inside the radical first because that's, our most, that's the most important part of this equation because if this inside here, if this is negative, then automatically we know that something is wrong. This has no real solution, but we're only interested in real solutions right now, so let's work out what what's inside here. We have negative 36 squared minus 4 times 0 0.1 times 111.11. So we end up with 36 plus or minus, and let's square root this number. The number that we got is 1,251.556. And when we square root that, we end up with this number right here, 37 point, actually 35, 35.38 divided by 0 0.2, because two times 0 0.1 is 0 0.2. Okay, now I'm gonna make some room up here. So now we have two solutions. We have T2 is equal to 36 plus 35.38 divided by 0 0.2, or T2 is equal to 36 minus 3.538 divided by 0 0.2. Now which one of these is the answer that we want? Both of these are solutions. Both T2s satisfy this equation right here. However, both T2s may not necessarily give us an answer that makes physical sense. So we have 36 plus 35.38 plus 35.38 divided by 0 0.2. This is 356.9 seconds. And the alternative is 36 minus 35.38 divided by 0 0.2, which is 3.1 seconds. Now, which one of these is the right answer? And I'm just gonna go ahead, and I'm going to erase this as well. Now remember, we had a constraint at the beginning, or we had a condition. We had T2 plus T3 is equal to 180, okay? Meaning that T2 is equal to 180 minus T3. And time, this is just T in general, all right time here, Time is always greater than or equal to zero. 
i.e. time is always positive. And of course we have our zero time, that's time at the beginning or time at the origin, or we use that for some condition at the beginning. However, time is always positive, okay? So 180 actually, yes. Let's, let's solve for T3, because this makes more sense. Because we found T2, okay? So T3 is equal to 180 minus T2, and time has to be positive. So if T2 is equal to 356.9 seconds, the only way that this can be possible is if T3 is negative, because if we work this out, we get 180 minus 356.9, meaning that T3 has to be 100, negative 100, 76.9 seconds, which physically doesn't make any sense inside this case. However, if we use this, we find that T3 is actually equal to 180 minus 3.1 or 176.9 seconds. So at the end of the day, the time taken or the time that Bobby J needs to accelerate for in order to complete this race in under three minutes is 3.1 seconds. Now, this is a lot to digest and I advise you to go over the video again. I had to split it into three parts because I feel like one 20 minute video would have been too much, so I split it into three into three, um, three smaller videos, and I know this one is a bit longer, but I include a lot of explanation because I don't want you to look at what I did and try to remember what I did, but I want you to understand my thought process in doing what I'm doing, and this isn't the only way to do this. There are so many ways to do some problems, but I just want you to understand the thought process behind solving a physics problem. That is the most important thing, your thought process. Okay, so thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.